Hi, I'm Tim Aubrey, and welcome to DMAD Marine Mammal Research Association's third course. This is lesson two, and today we're going to be looking at slope analysis. Please remember to keep liking, subscribing, and most importantly, sharing these videos so that we can reach as many people as possible. Okay, so in this lesson, I've just got our raster up again. Um, the only difference between this raster and the one that you were using is that we set a zero value on the previous raster, if you want to do that. It's not really that important, but you go to transparency and we'll just set the additional new data value. Um, and today we're going to look at something called uh, slope analysis. And slope analysis is really quite a simple process once we've got our DEM, uh, but actually quite an underutilized process in my opinion. Um, knowing how steep a slope is can be really important. Uh, people said that they wanted some more marine biology examples. Well, if we're designing our survey and we're looking at a survey area, we know that there's certain animals, um, certain species of dolphin, for example, Risso's dolphin, that really like uh, slopes, steep slopes, um, and steep drop-offs. Uh, and so we can find out where these steep slopes are, um, we're going to be using a terrestrial example today, but there's no reason it can't be applied to our uh, our elevation model of the sea floor. So, exactly the same sort of thing. Um, and in this course, I'm going to show you where things go wrong as well. Um, hopefully, this has helped you if you run into similar situations. Um, so, in a couple of videos, you'll you'll notice that I'm deliberately making mistakes to show you these. So for example, in this video, uh, I'm going to go to raster, analysis, and slope. And I've got my complete raster file here. And I just hit run. And you will notice I get this really horrible uh, output raster which is uh, running from 0 to 90, well it's only 0 and 90 so it's uh, just binary and it's telling me that um, everything that's flat is 0, well everything where there's a 0 value is 0 effectively and everything else is at a slope of 90 degrees which basically means that the slope is vertically upwards so 0 would be flat and 90 degrees is vertically upwards in this case. Um, and obviously Montenegro isn't a series of vertical slopes so this is incorrect and the reason for that and actually this is my fault is that um, our raster wasn't projected into ETM um, so what we need to do is we need to just uh, save this layer so go to export and save as uh, and I'm just going to save it as uh, raster not taster, raster UTM 34 and then just come in here and make sure we find our UTM 34. If it's UTM 34 because it's Montenegro you'll have to find the UTM area for whatever zone you're working in. Um, a quick search engine will tell you that. Uh, if your UTM zone doesn't appear in this list you can just click this button here and that will take you to it. So I've done that and I've brought in my UTM zone and it's you'll see it's twisted very slightly um, that's not a problem you'll notice that if we untick then our rasters still match um, quite nicely now as I said it's very simple you just go to raster uh, analysis and go to slope and this time um, yeah, this time we can just click run. I'm going to save it this time. So just come down to my slope analysis. I'm just going to save over my file. So click yes. You won't have that option because you've not created one. And then I'm going to click run. And you'll see now I get this far more useful raster. Um, I'll just remove the one underneath. Uh, I get this far more useful raster, uh, which shows me that I've got these really steep edges here, and I've I've got a really steep ridge here, and a really steep ridge here. 
Um, we've got this sort of white line around the outside just because we've got no data around the outside. So uh, uh, QGIS is going from zero to whatever data value this is. So we just need to be aware of that. Um, again, if you want to turn the, uh, this black around the outside, you just have to set the transparency value. So I'm going to hit zero, click apply, and we'll get the same thing. And that will get rid of that white line. But I mean, you don't have to get rid of it, but it's just something that we need to be aware of that we do have um, zero data outside of our Montenegro country file in the example we've been using. Um, and now you can see we've sort of got this, uh, yeah, we've sort of got these darker areas which are very flat. You can see this is uh, all the area around the lake that we constantly refer to. Um, so it makes sense that that's flat because it's a bit of a catchment zone. Um, and then we have these areas which are the, the mountainous areas we sort of looked at in the last lesson. Um, and you can see that actually these are, these are really quite steep areas. Uh, similarly, coming away from the bay, you can see we've got these really steep areas and this little ridge down here. So, like I said, that can be really useful because there are certain animals that really like being around the slope. Um, and, yeah, it can be really useful um, because we can, if, we're, if we want to be doing a survey and we only have limited resources, which I unfortunately we find ourselves a lot in marine biology then uh, we can look at certain areas where we have uh, suspicions that there might be a greater chance of these animals in greater detail and therefore um, yeah therefore we can sort of um, use our resources the most effectively okay I hope you found that use lesson useful and I'll see you in the next one